What we're going to be going over here is solving multiple product cost volume profit analysis or CVP as they refer to it. And we're going to look at uh, solving these problems in units or quantities versus dollar amounts. Okay, so let's start with our basic concept here for cost volume profit analysis. This is where your total revenues are going to equal your total costs plus some profit. So we'll just go through some simple equations here. So uh, showing our total revenues, TR here is equal to TC, our total cost, plus let's just say our profit is some net income here before taxes. So we can uh, further uh, uh, expand this equation here where our total revenues are going to equal our total cost, which are our total fixed cost, plus our total variable cost, plus some profit here, net income before taxes. So then we can just move these total variable cost over to this side of the equation by subtracting it from each side here. So our total revenues less our total variable cost, that difference is going to equal our total fixed cost plus some net income here before taxes. So we can look at our total revenues here versus our total variable cost that is our total contribution margin and this is what we're going to be looking at here uh, in looking at units versus dollars here so our total contribution margin equals our total fixed cost again plus some net income here before taxes so looking at it in terms of units here and i've got the key shown here s is for sales p is for unit price here v is a unit variable cost and x would be the number of units so first looking at it in terms of units this is where you're going to again you have your total revenues as you total fixed cost plus your total variable cost plus some profit here and our total revenues is going to be some unit price times some quantity that we'd be solving for and that's going to equal our total fixed cost plus the variable unit uh, uh, price here variable cost per unit times some quantity x here plus some uh, profit here, net income before taxes. So again, we can move this variable cost over to this side of the equation. So price times some quantity less our variable unit uh, cost here times some quantity. Again, equals our total fixed cost plus some profit here. So they just factor X out, the quantity out from your equation here. So the unit price less our unit variable cost per unit here, that difference times some unit quantity here is going to equal our total fixed cost plus the profit we're looking at. So this is our contribution margin. Our, we're going to call this a weighted contribution margin here is simply the, di uh, the going to be the sum of our price and our variable cost for our different products here times that quantity here equals our total fixed cost plus some net income here before taxes. So this is going to be the difference here. We're going to be looking at it in bursts of units here. This weighted uh, contribution margin here is going to be based on units over here. But if we look at it in terms of dollars, and you have to make this distinction when you're solving for dollars or dollar amounts versus a uh, unit quantities here. Your uh, weighted contribution margin here, it, really your contribution margin is going to be based on dollar amounts here. You're going to have some unit price versus your unit variable cost divided by some price or based on some quantities here. Uh, uh, price times some quantity less variable cost times some quantity divided again here by uh, the price times some quantity, your total revenues here. So they're going to be in one of those forms. You have to uh, determine, uh, set your contribution margin here in terms of dollars when you're solving these problems in terms of dollars here. So in this case, your total revenue, again, would be your total fixed cost plus some variable cost plus some net income before taxes. And then our total revenues in terms of dollars would just be S, our total sales dollars here, equals our total fixed cost. And then our total variable cost is going to be some sales dollars here times some variable unit cost divided by the unit price here. So what we're going to be looking at here is the, the weighted average contribution margin times some sales is going to equal our total fixed cost plus some profit here, net income before taxes. So we're going to make this comparison here between a weighted unit uh, a contribution margin versus weighted contribution margin here based on sales. Okay, so solving our CVP problems here in terms of units or quantity here. Okay, so what we're going to be working off here, we're going to be just looking at two different products here, X1 and X2, and each of them is going to have a different price and a unit variable cost. And then we're going to have a mix ratio for each of those products. The mix ratio is how many, how much of the product we sell of each quantity or each product here. So we're going to have a mix ratio of 60%. We're going to sell here for product X and 40% here we're selling for product X2 here. Okay, so what we do here for 
uh, in solving in terms of units here, we have to come up with that weighted contribution margin here. And that's simply the summing, the difference between, and let's look at it, our different prices, here, unit price here versus our unit variable cost times the mix ratio. We're going to be summing those. So let's just go and let's solve for our weighted unit, uh, our weighted unit. Uh, Un, un, weighted cost uh, contribution margin in terms of units here. So what we're going to do here in this problem here, we'll just take our price versus our variable cost. So for X1, our price is $4, variable cost is $3. So that difference here, four less $4 minus $3 times the mix ratio here of 60% here. Okay, so that's going to be uh, for our product X1 here. And then for product X2, we'll just take our unit price here of $8 less our variable cost here of $5 and that difference times the mix ratio here of 40%. So our sum weighted average uh, contribution margin here, the sum amount is going to be 1.8 here. That's the weighted average contribution margin here in terms of units. Okay, so that's based on units here. So when you're going to solve those problems based on unit quantities here, you have to come up with that weighted contribution margin just as we've done here, just taking, looking at the price versus our variable cost times the mix ratio. Okay, so now if we're going to be looking, that was case A here. Now let's look at solving our cost volume problem, uh, prob, prof, problems here in terms of dollar amounts here. So this is what you have to do in terms of dollar amounts. You just, you can't just take your price times your versus your variable cost times the mix ratio. You have to come up with it in terms of dollars. So what we did up above here, that contribution margin in terms of dollars here, it'd be your price versus your variable cost divided by the unit price here. So we're going to look at it in terms of those, and that's how we're going to calculate our contribution margin ratio here. Up above here, we calculated it a bit different here. So what we're going to do here, it's in terms of dollars. So what we would do here for uh, product X1 here, our price here, what was that? $4 versus our variable cost here, $3. We've, and we take that here, $4 versus $3, and then we have to divide it by the unit price here. So we're going to come up with a contribution margin ratio here for product X1 at 0.25 here. Okay, so that's for product uh, product X1 here. 60, the mix ratio is the same here between our two products here. We're, we're working off this table here, price versus variable cost here times the mix ratio. But for our, in terms of dollars, we have to make, we have to equate this contribution margin ratio based price versus variable cost divided by the price itself here. So for our X1 here, what do we come up with? 0.25 here. Uh, price versus variable cost, again, divided by the price here. And then for our second X2 here, what we're going to do would be our $8 price versus our $5 variable cost divided by our $8 price per unit basis. So 8 minus 5 divided by 8, that's going to give us a, a contribution margin ratio here of 3.75. So what we have to do, and that's going to go times our mix ratio here, of 40%. So our weighted contribution margin here, the sum total, we went through the same as we did up above, only we had to equate it to dollars here based on, we had to divide that contribution margin here was based on dollars by dividing it here by its price. So we're going to come up with a weighted contribution margin here of 0 0.30 here. That's a contribution margin ratio based on dollars. A contribution margin ratio based on units here was 1.8 here. Okay, so we could just stop right here, but let's go in and let's prove and let's look at how we'd apply these two different methods to see uh, exactly how we'd be using them and what the difference is here and how you have to uh, be, be cognizant. You have to understand that when you're working with just solving with units, you'd go through our first technique here. Uh, weighted price is going to our weighted contribution margin is going to be price versus variable cost times our mix ratio, whereas with solving for in terms of dollars, we did the same thing, price versus variable cost here uh, times the uh, contribution, our mix ratio here, but we divided it by the unit price here. So that was the difference. So you have to make that distinction here when you're solving it in terms of units here versus terms of dollars. All right, so let's go up and let's apply what we've done here. Okay, so our weighted contribution margin based on units here. I'm just do it very simple here. 
and it's a, we're going to do everything here to uh, based on it to break even number of units here again our contribution margin is going to well I've got the equations here you can go through it there uh, but our contribution margin is going to equal our total fixed cost plus some net income before taxes we'll just set our net income before taxes here at zero since this is going to be break even point here just based on no profit here. So our contribution margin is our weighted unit contribution, on a weighted per unit amount here, and we calculated that to be 1.8 here, times the number of units. And our total fixed cost, let's just say it's $300,000 uh, here. So just solving for x, one point, divide both sides by 1.8 here, 300,000 into 1.8, you're gonna come up with the total mixed units between both of those products here at 166,666 units. So for product X1, we were gonna just take that mix ratio here, uh, X1 at a 60% mix ratio or 0 0.6 times 166,666 gives us 100,000 units here of product X1 that we're gonna have to break. Uh, sell here to break even. Total break even quantity here in product that we have to sell was that 166,666. But now we're allocating it between X1 and X2 here. Okay, so we've done it for X1 here at 100,000 units. X2, the mix ratio is 40%. So 40% times our total amount, total mixed units here is going to give us 66,666 units. Okay, so all we've done here is we've just taken uh, the total mixed units here times the uh, contribution or the mix ratio here to determine the number of units that we have to sell for each one of those here to break. And this is break on a break even point. Now let's go and let's look at it weighted this weighted contribution margin based on dollar amounts here. So again, we're going to be working off this equation here. Weighted contribution margin here, that one that we calculated at 0 0.3 here times our sales dollars equals our total fixed cost plus some net income before taxes, which we're setting it equal to zero here. So our general solution is shown over here, but just using those equations here, we'll go in and we'll look, uh, look at our, to determine our break even point here. So weighted contribution margin was 0.3 uh, times the sales dollars here equals 300,000. So our sales dollars here is gonna divide both sides by 0.3 here. So 300,000 divided by 0.3 here, weighted contribution margin here, based on dollars. That is gonna give us $1 million here of sales here. So just we have to just allocate this total uh, sales amount here of $1 million between the sales of X1 here and X2 here. And we'll just say sales of X1 would be the $1 million here times the contribution ratio or mix ratio here is 0.6 for product X1 here. That's going to give us 600,000 here uh, for product X1 sales. We have to generate 600,000 here in sales. And S2 uh, mix ratio was 0.4 times the total million dollars here in sales is going to give us 40% of the million is 400,000. Okay, so that's what we've done here in terms of uh, dollars here. We used the weighted contribution margin here in terms of dollars times sales. Uh, equal our fixed cost and we just solve for sales here by dividing weighted contribution margin by both sides here. Okay, so if we look at it in terms of units here, just for unit X1 here, six, we take the $600,000 that we sell for here for is sales for X1 here and divide it by the uh, unit price here. Or the unit price here was $4. So we're going to come up with 600000 in sales divided by unit price here, $4, gives us 150000 we have to sell here for X1 in order to break even. And then for X2, the same thing here. Just take your 400000 and divide it by, uh, for product X1, its unit price was $8. So you're going to come up with 50000 here. So you're going to have to sell 50000 here of a product X1 uh, in order to break even here. Now, if we did the comparison just by going up here and looking at what we've done here based on our weighted contribution margin based on units here, we have X1, we had 100,000 units versus X1 down here, we have 150,000 units. So you can see they're not comparable. And then for X2 here was 66,666 units versus 50,000 units not comparable just to make the only reason we went through this is just to look at how we would use their different weighted average or weighted contribution averages here based on dollars versus based on units here and you can see they're not comparable but now let's just see let's go down here again in this 
S here, the way to, just to determine your X here, or your amount here was just those sales dollars you had here for each of those divided by the unit price here. Okay, and then the mix ratio here based for break even dollars was just that, or taking the mix ratio times the total uh, sales dollars that you're looking at times the mix ratio here gave the uh, sales for each of the different units we're looking at. Okay, so let's just go down here. Just for comparison purposes here. Now to break even, we'd have to change this mix ratio here just to understand what's going on here. Okay, so uh, just, and we're gonna do it for the same number of units we have to, just for comparison purposes between our weighted contribution margin based on dollars here versus based on units here. So we're gonna look at our based on units. So if we've gone through our break even analysis here, here with to determine units to come up with the same number of units between our based on dollars versus based on do units here, we're gonna to have to come up with a different weighted contribution margin here. And it's gonna to have to be 1.5 versus the 1.8 that we're dealing with. And in order to do, do that, we're gonna, we'd have to change our uh, mix ratio here for X1, in, we were working with that 60, 40% here, X1 versus X2, we'd have to change it to 75, 25% here, X1, X2, to come up with the same number of units here. So uh, let's just say and 75, 25% is gonna give us an average weighted uh, contribution margin in units at 1.5 versus the 60, 40% here was 1.8. So just going back to our deal here, uh, weighted contribution, 1.5, times x into 300,000, just divide both sides by 1.x, uh, 1.5, you're gonna get 300,000 here, 1.5 is gonna give us $200,000 in total mixed units here. So, and we'd have to use that contribution margin ratio or mix ratio here, 75, 25. So now that's 200,000 total mixed units times 75 or 0.75% or mix ratio here for x1 at 75 is 150,000 units. And for 25% here of the total 200,000 here for X2, that's gonna give us 50,000 units here based on our mix ratios here. We had to change our mix ratio here in order to come up with the same units. So if we gone up here and did our comparison here for our break even a, a contri contribution margin based on dollars here, it was 150,000 here for X1, 50,000 here for X2. That was based on that contribution margin here for dollars. But that was based on that 60-40% uh, ratio here between mix ratio here. But in an order, just to make, just to prove the point here, just to prove that uh, you'd have to change the mix ratio in order that they be compatible here. And that's not gonna happen. That means you're gonna be, it, they're not compatible. They just aren't compatible. You have, you'd have to be, uh, just did change our mix ratio here to show that yes, you can come up with the same number of units here, but the mix ratios are definitely not compatible here. Okay, so just understand what's going on here. And when you're dealing with these different uh, break-even points and looking at these different uh, cost volume profit analysis, you have to understand that you have to base your different uh, ratios here on either units or dollars. And if you base them on dollars here, you come up with some uh, contribution made it average here in dollars, you can convert those dollars over in to units here just by dividing, uh, token, taking your total do dollar amount that you'd be allocating for each of those products here based on your uh, mix ratio here and divide it by the unit price here, you come up with some quantity. So uh, using your, uh, uh, solving these CVP problems here, just remember you have to, if you're working with dollar amounts, you have to keep uh, solving in terms of dollars, you have to understand how that weighted contribution margin here, it has to be in terms of dollars. And if you're just looking at units, then it would be in units here. But if you know, if you know your dollar amount here, and then you obviously know your unit price here, then you can solve for the quantity as well. Okay, so that's our summary here, solving for multiple product cost volume problem, problems here in terms of quantity or units versus dollar amounts.